the MCU and the decision to give these guys this reign. Oh, the MCU doesn't give their directors free reign. This is what happens when we get this. When we get free reign, you you get somebody to do whatever he wants or whatever the studio. I don't know what's going on anymore. Ryan. Comedy falls prey to this all the time. There are so few comics who can do the same shtick over and over again and get people to buy it. Right? Like Adam Sandler, at the height of his powers, was able to do that. Um, but I think, you know, the analogy I thought of was like, you know, we've talked about the, I thought the Guardians analogy was really accurate, like Guardians 1 to Guardians 2. Like you've got, you know, I think a more extreme example would be like Hangover 1 to Hangover 2 and 3, where it's like the first one's a modern comic classic. But then they go to the same well and they triple down on the same gags. And you're like, nah, man, we've been here before. Yeah. I'm not going to laugh the second, <laughs> third, and fourth time. Yeah. And so I feel like when you say like, it's not, it's not your brand of comedy. I think we could safely say based upon the reviews and the audience reaction, this ultimately was no one's brand of comedy because there was too much. Of it. Yeah. Like even if there's individual moments where you would laugh it's surrounded by so many other over-the-top gags and forced you know kind of slapsticky moments that you've already seen in Ragnarok basically that you're kind of just like you're bored so you almost forget to laugh at the things that might actually be legitimately fun um and I think that's just that's where like you can see in the reviews the same people who loved Ragnarok are like meh this time around because they feel that same sense of repetition that that we didn't like it to begin with. Now we really don't like it. They <laughs> loved it to begin with. Now they're like lukewarm on it. Do you think there, because we've heard this before, oh, Chris Hem Hemsworth has good comedic timing. You think they're playing that card too heavy? They're giving this guy oh, too much 10, credit? thousand percent. 10,000 percent. It's like, yo, comedic timing and comedic bludgeoning are very different things, right? It's like when he does his like, oh, I'm and we kind of when he does this sort of like blubbering, I'm trying to be in command, but I don't know what I'm doing. That works when it's like this. Yeah. But when that's like six monologues in front of the, the Asgardians and the kids and the people, like it gets tiresome. And so that's what I mean by the Taika of it all. Hemsworth and Taika are close. Hemsworth was responsible for getting Taika into the franchise. But these two guys jumped the shark in this movie. There's just too much of the same stuff. And they did it. They lost connection with the, what the, with the balance of what the audience was um, resonating with in Ragnarok, which we didn't, but I'm saying the audience by and large resonated with. It's everything you and I were concerned about. They took the volume of the comedy versus the drama and they cranked the volume to the comedy in those sections way. We heard high. this months ago, Brian. 10% too high, like 80% too high. And we were on this from the beginning that this was going to be a real pitfall for this move. More Taika. That's what we kept on hearing. More months ago, more Taika. We were like, oh man. And you know how you know it's more Taika? See, this is to me like, the part that I lay at his feet, and there's no getting around it. You know how we know he was feeling himself? Because who got the biggest increase in lines and part in this movie? Korg. He did. Korg. <laughs> he called his own number over and over and over again. And I want to get back to this, but like Korg was like a fun little five minute gag in Ragnarok. The idea that he's like, a main dude in the crew for this movie is a fatal mistake. And all that is, is ego. That is 100% director ego. I'm going to hit you in the face with how awesome and funny and clever I am. And guess what? Taika Waititi might be, he's a really talented, creative guy. Newsflash, ain't nobody going to a Thor movie to watch Korg, ever. No. That's not why you go. And if you don't get that, then you've already kind of lost the some of the audience. So that's it. You know that he was feeling himself because that's how 
Korg was everywhere in this movie for no reason, no reason at all. Imagine, because Chris Hemsworth has a performance in him, I'm just waiting to see. He's had those moments in, 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 in some of these other films, more serious toned films. Um, but he hasn't gotten it since Tiger came on. And it's just, it's just whack. And, and, and I just think about, I saw uh, uh, an interview with Russell Crowe on Howard Stern of him talking about uh, him working with Ridley Scott on Gladiator. And, and, and he told Russell how to, what he wanted him to do and and you can, they knew the connection was there. And that movie Gladiator, Russell Crowe was set up to say some great and stuff and do some great stuff. Thor is that type of character, to me anyway, who says some like, oh snap, you know, he gets you excited. In no moment of this, although there were some aspects of this movie that I liked and we'll talk about that, right? But it's just him being a, a goofball, yo. I don't totally agree with that. I think in the second half of the movie, there are a few scenes where Hemsworth taps into the other side. And I wish, yeah. they, had let, I wish they had let him let it out more because I think it really worked. And I would say that as an example of a choice I would not have made, but I think it ultimately worked, is if I, we go back to Endgame, Fat Thor, right? Like the idea of Fat Thor is pretty goofy, right? Like it's yeah. probably not a card that I would have played, yeah. but when they go visit him and he flips the switch and starts said talking Thanos. about, when he starts talking about Thanos, that's the bounce where he yeah. looks physically so silly but he's delivering those lines and you're feeling his pain and his guilt. This movie failed to manage that in a way that Endgame kind of took you to the edge of the comedy, but then pulls you back. And it's the same as when they got set to fight Thanos at the end, where like he, he, he gets serious and he's like, he's like, fine, just so long as we agree, we're going to kill it. You know, just so long as we're in agreement, let's kill him properly this time. Like, he is able to flip back into that mode. And, and this movie, again, it's just, it's just lopsided. It's just in the moments where he's comedic, he's so out of bounds that it's just grating to where like when he becomes serious, it kind of undermines it. Cause you're like, if this dude, right. Cause the whole core initial monologue, which I is horrible in my opinion, it's terrible because the tone sets the movie improperly. Yeah. He talks about everything he loses. He shows, like, he literally shows you, like, he lost his friends, he lost his people, lost his planet. And the next thing you show, like, he's like a cult leader, like, yoga dude on the side of the mountain just having a, the time of his life. And you're like, that doesn't fit, man. You just yeah, keep yeah. in everything that he went through to get a laugh out of yeah. making him look like a shaman. And then like, that's just yeah. whatever. Like, so, so anyway, I, yeah, your, your initial <laughs> point, I 100% agree. It's a top three mistake and it goes to my frustration because we know Hemsworth has better in him and he wasn't oh yeah utilized that way not at all not at all I mean let's talk about some of the good things that we like right or do or do you have other things to say that you didn't like about the film that you want to go over real quick um well why don't we I could save some of that for when, when we do the fix I thought Russell Crowe was a little too over the top uh, yeah. So, so I, he wasn't as far off as I thought he might be in the sense that I do think of Zeus as incredibly arrogant. Yes. He is boorish. Like he is pretty obtuse a lot of the time, but he's not dainty. And that's the thing that like, I think they went one step too far. Like, there's a lot of that give and take where I could have said like, yeah, that actually makes sense. It resonates. It sets up the kind of Zeus that I, but like he needed just a little more of the Russell Crowe gravitas to kind of pull that in. Again, it's again that 10% too far mm -hmm. to make you feel like I also should be afraid of this guy. 
And, and I wasn't afraid of him, even when he was using his power. No, he looked like Ron Jeremy, yo. <laughs> like Ron Jeremy, you know, it was, it was just, it was just, but anyway, I, 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 I somewhat, it grew on me, his performance. Cause he was, when he, the thing is, I, 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 listen, it's not that things need to be serious all the time, but when there is some serious, there's something to take from there. Not this constant awkwardness surrounding this movie and those little moments is the, mo the moments that I remember most are the ones that I enjoyed the most, obviously, right? Um, yeah. So let's talk about that. Christian Bale, he, he does it again in, ter in terms of his performance, Brian. He was great. And it makes me wonder, based on what we've heard, what else could we have seen? You, like you said, there is a great movie here. Seeing Gore hunting down these these guys, Thor not Bingo. being injured. That my number one improvement to this movie. I love the opening. Actually, I thought the opening scene was a great yeah. open, whole yeah. open. I wanted two more of those. I wanted his 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 renouncing of his faith and his initial kind of God slaying. And then I wanted to build on that momentum as opposed to just showing the carnage. Mm. I would rather have had them, I thought this was an easy way for them to bring the kind of the, the mythological in. Show two more scenes where he has real dialogue with two other gods from the MC, like from the MCU canon. You get a cool set piece where he gets to kill them, but you also empathize with him in each of those scenes because you're like, I think they did a nice job in the open of having, I think it's Dionysus. I forget who's, who he kills initially, but like that God is that cavalier attitude toward the worshipers. Do that more to basically get you on the side of like, okay, this guy is crazed and he's possessed, but I get where he's coming from. Why? And, and, and like he points out to these different civilizations, how the gods have abandoned them and forsaken them, how he's actually doing them a favor. Two more scenes of that, 10 more minutes of that, taken away from Korg, taken away from the comedy, give it to Christian Bale to let him cook in those scenes. Because he was also great in action, as he always is, because he's so oh, yeah, committed. Yeah, 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 yeah. That would have been my number one improvement to the balance of this movie. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what greater reason to stop Gore when he knows this is happening and yet people are probably asking Thor to come back and he won't until he hears word that he's possibly going after Jane or whatever the case may be, right? He's going after whomever that's really truly important to Thor that he has to come back. Yeah, throwing that montage there of him working out. Yeah, that's silly, but he gets back into it and then we see Thor a little bit more serious and really going after hunting Gore down to get a, get a face off with him. And who knows if he loses this, just make it like epic, man. Not this goofy ass movie. Well, that was my thing too, is if you do it that way, I think it also introduces like a, like a, a race against time element to this movie that they were trying to create with Stormbreaker yes. Yes. and Eternity. But you never quite felt the urgency because of all the gags. So mm. if they have like, what I would have done is like, they got closest with the Sif scene in the sense that he gets there a little too late, right? She's yeah. she's just lost. So I would have had a couple of those where he Thor actually gets there on time, and he can't protect the god in question, right? He survives. Gore wins the bat the exchange, right? And then kind of get this running thing of like. He's been he's been a little better than me, yeah, and yeah, yeah. what do I need to actually take him down at the end? And I think that would have built that momentum to when they have that final showdown. Yeah. You would have been like, okay, like what what new trick does does Thor have in the bag? Because part of the problem for Thor is that he's so powerful, right? You have to break him down to make him seem vulnerable, right? And they yeah. had a way to do that in this movie, and they. But the, the thing that also frustrates me is we know those scenes exist because. Christian Bale told us they exist. Yeah, yeah. And Taika told us they filmed a number of scenes where Gore killed other gods. We didn't get to see it. I'm like, then that's where I go to the parliament. 
what are you guys doing? How do you not have one or two more of those in there? This movie is an hour and 54 minutes. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. I was going to mention something with regards to uh, um, Gore, but it, it slipped my mind. Um, what did you think of the visual effects on the black and white uh, environment that they were in? I actually really enjoyed it. It's a Me new too. technology. It's called plate light. Apparently, it's one of Taika's buddies um, developed it. And so it's one of the first times it's been used on film. But it's super cool. If you get a chance, like Google it. It's like they have a website, too, where they show you kind of like how they how they do it. And it's like. It's basically just like lights from all angles mm -hmm. and you're shooting this like panoramic version of the scene and so like the director like after he says cut kind of has all the angles and all the lighting already done in one sequence and then he chooses like what he wants to show i just liked it because it was original like it looked yeah. different it didn't look cheap like it yeah. looked pretty sharp yeah. So, and I appreciate that, like, they, that, you know, Taika is a pretty good action director when he wants to be, like, the choreography, mm -hmm. like, was pretty decent, like, you know, honestly, again, it's another scene where they could have spent two more minutes on, in that if they wanted in the battle, but I was pretty happy with it, like, you know, there's a couple of set pieces in this movie, I, I think the last one is actually, I, there's one big problem I have with it, but there's a couple of things there I liked, but yeah, no, I liked it, I don't know, did you, well, how did you feel about the, the visual and then sort of like where they put it in the movie and how they how they played it out. I like you, I enjoyed it. I was like, wow, this is different and and and, and it looks really, really cool. because uh, I hadn't seen something like that before. Um so I enjoyed it. Um I enjoyed some a lot of the action suite because it was between um Christian Bell. He just moved I don't know if it's a stunt double but whoever they use, they oh, he moves great. You know him. You know him. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's it it's it it's it, it's it, it all goes, you know, it goes back to every, you know, Batman, Reign of Fire, like he, he's a pretty athletic dude. Like he, yeah. like he, his movement, I think he's got a lot of experience at this point, but yeah, when he's wielding the sword and he's like, kind of like all, you know, kind of skin and bones, it's pretty wild. Like I, he, I, I, like I mean, if you want to see Kristen Bale do some dope stuff, watch oh, Equilibrium. Yeah, that's gotta right. watch that, gotta, gotta watch that. Gotta yeah, watch that. Yeah. Um, Brian, so what are your thoughts? Um, first of all, what, what so what what score do you give it? I give it, I give it a two. I give it a two and a half. Uh, like I said, I think there's a good. I think it's a really good half movie. That's kind of like my simple rationale for the five is perfect. It's a half a good movie. But let me just run down my other fixes quickly. Let me. Speak. Okay. So I gave you my number one, which was two more gore set pieces and dialogues with two other gods and have thor chasing him kind of through like stop to stuff that that would be my number one change okay. my number two change um is in getting rid of korg i'm basically korg is in my version of the story he can do a little bit of the narration to the kids but he's not on the crew at all yeah, 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 like, yeah. i don't need it like i don't i don't i just don't need it that that's so that's my number two change um and so obviously just with those two changes, I'm I'm naturally ratcheting down the comedy. I gave you my third one, which is I would I would have tweaked Zeus. To, I would I would have taken the essence of what Crow gave us and then added kind of a more sinister regal stop to him in that exchange. But here's my big one, my other big one. Um I think Hercules should have been in this movie instead of Korg. That's my now, let me make the case and where I would do it and how I would do it. Because this will feed into another credit scene, which I think you and I agree was kind of a waste. Um, when they go to, what do they call it? The Olymp not their version of Olympus, Omni Omnipotent City or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would have played it generally the same, which is Zeus denies them. Right, and basically is like, whatever, you're on your own, who cares, blah, 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 blah. I would, I would have honored the comics. I would have had Hercules join the cause right there. Because we know, like, in, this, in, the, in the mythology, Hercules is not on the side of the gods all the time. He's Thor's buddy. 
Yeah. Like the whole point of being half God is that he's constantly, the whole point of his labors is that Hera hates his guts because he's the <laughs> bastard son of Zeus, right? So like, I would have had Hercules appear at that moment in some way to effectively like be on the side or maybe they meet him in some capacity before the big auditorium. But after Zeus turns them down, they're in the fight, Hercules basically gets them out of it. Like he yeah. basically rescues them and he's like, you know, follow me. And that starts the that starts the friendship. And now instead of Korg and the crew, it's Thor, Mighty Thor, Valkyrie, and Hercules yeah. going on the run after. Because when you think about the omnipotent city scene, other than letting Russell Crowe ham it up, the only reason they went there was for the lightning bolt. Right? Yeah. They just went there to get the weapon. They needed a new weapon because they were going to use Stormbreaker as the MacGuffin to get to eternity. So my proposal is just bring Hercules along and you solve the same thing. You don't even need the lightning bolt. Just have him yeah. in the crew. Yeah. But now, as opposed to having the, hey, we've got Brett Goldstein. Look at us. And we might not see Hercules. When are we going to see Hercules in the movie now? Ten years from now? Eight years from now? Who's it? Who, who knows? It's like Clea, right? It's the same thing. Yeah. Who knows, right? Yeah. But if you put him in the movie, kind of like Black Panther was introduced, and you let Goldstein do what he can do, now he matters. Yeah. And now you care. And by the way, this credit scene set up Hercules as Thor's enemy when we know they're going to end up friends. So you exactly. already just wasted something that I know is going to happen. So why don't you just get us to what we know we're going to be, yeah. Yeah. have them be friends. And at the end, it would fix the last scene, the last battle for me because I didn't like the use of the children as like Thor avatars. I hated it. Like, I hated it. Ish, yeah. I hated like, it. When, when, when did he, like, and, and John Campion brought up a good point. Like, how did he know he can use this powers and why didn't he give these powers to everybody else during Endgame? How about Infinity War? <laughs> Infinity War, he should have, they were all standing there. They were all there. Like he just showed up. He should have given it to them right then. Absolutely terrible. Hated it. But you know what? It's, yeah. They used Hemsworth's actual kids. They used Bale's actual kids. That's why they did it. They did it so those, those kids could have fun. Like, be, But here's my point. That final battle, I actually really liked the... Uh, Natalie Portman, Chris Hemsworth versus Christian Bale, part of that fight. I thought there was some really cool sequences in that. So if you take Hercules and have him fighting the shadow monsters and you keep Hemsworth and Portman fighting Bale, problem solved. The kids wow. are now the hostages. They don't have powers. You get to see Hercules do Hercules things. You get to see Hercules be dope. See, to me, like, I do that, the movie's fixed. I'm sorry. Like if I yeah. if, if that happens, tell me that's not a better movie than you got. Oh yeah, that's a way better movie. That's that's that that's all. Oh. But I don't know, but I don't know what's going on over there, Marvel. I don't know what's <laughs> I, I don't I, that's I, what I'm saying. That's a but that's a parliament error because the, the, the story is Kevin Feige did that Brett Goldstein scene. That's what they said. That was his scene, his choice. He wanted it played that way. And so I'm like, it's on you, man. I don't like it. I don't like what you're doing there. I think you're wasting a movie because we know they're going to be friends. Yeah. Yeah. And and how hard, how difficult, I mean, you just laid it out real quick and how difficult would it have been um, to create that banter between Hercules and Thor while they're on their journey to go fight? They're getting to know oh, each other. Yeah. <laughs> You're just taking there's Korg's a comedy. Just, there's a comedy. Swapping, you're just swapping Korg's lines for Hercules, and you can have some gags in that. It's totally fine. Yeah. There's the comedy. like one's from one's from Asgard, one's from Olympus. It it writes itself. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's what frustrates me. I'm like, it's not hard, man. But that's where it's like, you know, Taika wanted to have his voice doing all the lines, you know, didn't want to, but. I don't know. I, I rarely think that I'm smarter than the writers or the editors, but this was one case where I was like, I don't think this was that hard. And I think there was, like right. I said, when this movie goes to, to the spectral realm, from that point on, I actually generally like the movie. Like, because it gets more serious. Yeah. The action set pieces are cool. This, like I said, the children thing I didn't like, but like, it's generally cooler. Yeah. But that first half, man, it's like almost like Doc Strange too. Like, that first half is so rough. Like by the time you get to Elizabeth Olsen kind of being Michael Myers, it's like you're out already. Yeah. 
I said, to, I was thinking about that movie, Dr. Strange 2, and, and my ultimate thing about it is that this movie is WandaVision 2 in movie form. That's all it is for me. I think Thor is better than that movie in the sense that, like I said, the second half of Thor is more rewatchable and yeah. the visuals are more impressive. Whereas in Doc Strange yeah. 2, I, I just think that's a mess kind of start to finish. And like, there's some, other than like, there's like little things like the music note fight and like there's tiny little things, but that one was a bigger mess to me than this. This yeah. one, I don't think Doc Strange 2 could have been a top five MCU film. I don't think there's a version of that in there. Yeah. This one yeah. I think could have been. Yes. Yeah. Um, anything else before we sign off? Well, let's talk about Natalie Portman a little bit. I mean, I think bringing, we didn't talk about her, bringing her back. Um, I thought it was a little uneven. Like I thought she was really good at points. And then you could kind of tell, like, she's just not a comedic actress. Like she's just yeah. not like, yeah, you know, she just, that's not her strength. That's not her mm. bag, you know? Yeah. Um, and, but I like the catchphrase thing. I was like, that's falling flat. I don't need that. Like that was that was almost painful when at the end she's yelling like "Eat my hammer." I'm like, you gotta be kidding! Like you actually like put that in the film script. But you know the way she plays, honestly, the way she played the the cancer and the sacrifice. That's Natalie Portman doing Natalie Portman things. Yeah. And I have to say, like, you know, like their goodbye scene was. There was some emotion to that. Like, yeah. you know, like it, 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 it made me feel like, again, could we have seen a little more of Thor and Jane kind of wrestling with her health along this journey? You know, a little yeah. more of those. I, 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 I thought they had a good moment there at the end. Like, even though they, you know, they kind of redeemed Gore and then killed him, which I was sort of surprised at, like, you know, that, but I guess Christian Bale's only going to do one movie for you. Yeah. Think, like, I didn't like Eternity, I agree with you, but I didn't mind the scene the way it was written in the sense of like, I thought all the actors were kind of on their game in that, in that moment together. Uh, and, then you, and I thought I felt something, you know, but. Yeah. But. Uh, I, I mean, when, when it got serious, Brian, I was more interested, you know? Uh, yeah, but the, com the comedy. Oh, really last thing me. though, I'm with you. Right. I don't need to see Thor. I don't need to see dad Thor. In another type of movie. What do you mean? Dad if Thor. it's Thor and Gore's kid in a buddy comedy, oh. like a movie, no, thank you, no, thank you. I don't want to see. I, don't, I, I like, no. You said it. You said you said it best. You text me. I'm not interested in seeing Tiger doing Star Wars anymore. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if he can escape this 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 funny itch that he has to. You know, putting these moves. I don't know. I don't know. But um, yeah, man, Thor was the disappointment I thought we were we were gonna get. Um, once I started hearing um all the stuff uh that people were saying about the film and saying that this was more Taika, and if you didn't like the first one, uh the first the Ragnarok because of the the comedy, this was that and more. And you're not gonna like this film, so that really confirmed it for me going in. Um, so I didn't really feel the rush to go in on Saturday, so I just bought, waited and, and then saw it on Sunday. But Brian, um, not gonna uh, make a billion dollars. No, 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 absolutely not. Uh, how much of a drop off do you think? I think pretty similar to Doctor Strange, to be quite honest. Which um, was seventy. Yeah, like 65 to 70 percent in the second weekend. Um, you know, it's similar to Doctor Strange. There's not a ton of competition, mm -hmm. but I do think, you know, you've got a, you still got amazingly Top Gun Maverick still going pretty strong. You've got uh, this, like, I think you got an animated movie coming this weekend. I think that Jordan Peele movie, if that gets good nope. reviews, yeah. is going to take some share the following week, and then Super Pets at the end of the month. So I, I think you're going to see a real fall off. So I think. You know, probably it has similar. Um, it was a little bit low. It was it was a lower global open than Doc Strange. So I'm kind of feeling like you know the last Thor movie I think was around eight twenty five, eight fifty global. Mm -hmm. I think this will kind of wind up somewhat similar to that, which I think on balance you have to view as a disappointment mm -hmm. relative to what you thought. Of course, 
Of course. Oh man. Exactly. This, that's this. the right, that's the right summation reaction to this movie right there. <laughs> that's, that's correct. <laughs> yeah, man. It's like, oh man, where, where, where are we what are we doing here? What are we doing? And people keep speaking of the same things. There's no direction. We don't know where are we going. We know we have a pretty good idea of where we're going, but there's no real defin defining situation um, that's telling us where we're going because the excitement is not there for any of these things, Brian. Um, so I want to say, what we'll do, I know mm -hmm. we're doing a fuller discussion of that, but mm -hmm. my tagline answer to that is I agree with it, but it's a cop out. That's an excuse. Because I would argue the best films are both outstanding on their own and connect you to a greater now. Mm -hmm. so, and like I said, I think this movie, it was there. Like this one is not, this is like, they, they weren't miles away from, from, a, from a real win here. Um, but combination of director, combination of editor slash parliament. Yeah, just some critical, I think critical missteps that like leave you just kind of like frustrated and yeah, disappointed overall. Yeah, and, and we, this movie, you know, felt like its own thing, right? Did it feel like its own movie? No connection. Well, space. yeah, I mean, there's a definitely, there's definitely, well, again, I want to save some of this for the other discussion, but there's mm -hmm. definitely some plot hole stuff where you're kind of like, if this is part of some greater narrative, like some sloppy writing here, right? Like even something simple like Thor's immediate response is, we're going to omnipotent city to rally the greatest army ever. It's like, hey, man, you got the best team of superheroes in the galaxy at one call away. Like you don't- Why, why, why not? Yeah. yeah, that's the thing, right? You don't want to talk to anybody in the Avengers right now. Like that's the tough part when you establish the universe that they have is like, you have to be careful with how you get to why you're not using any of your allies. Mm -hmm. And especially in this movie where the Guardians were in the movie. That's the other thing that's kind of weird is like you use them to connect back to Endgame. But then, you know, you went in this whole other direction. Anyway, I think there's a little bit of that that we need to talk about big picture because I think Marvel's storytelling from a stakes perspective and how they're like segmenting the characters, which they have to do. I agree. It's it's just not as tight as I think it could be. Oh, man, ladies and gentlemen, Thor Love and Thunder. Love and Blunder. I know, right? Uh, be, oh, be sure to check out one of the episodes that I just put out. I, 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 I'm, instead of calling it Black Adam, I'm calling it Black Rock. It is so fitting, Brian. It is so fitting. That's true. Um, but yeah, let us know in the conversation below what you guys thought of thought of and thunder. Like seriously though, like what did you guys think? Did, where where is this movie in like your top? If you if it's in your top five, I don't know because people say oh they love the movie, they like the movie. Where is it? Where does it fall? Top ten, top fifteen? Tell us in the conversation below because I got this down down this is like down there okay Thor. so you're as i suspected you're lower than me yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 it's low it's maybe low for me I, i'm not watching this again other than perhaps maybe the Kristen bale parts um hopefully although tyke is talking about there is no director's cut coming out and stuff like whatever right um but certainly that stuff exists and if you have this in your top five we can't have a conversation no no no. There's no no basis. Like you got Avengers one, three, four, Captain America two, three, Iron Man one. Like that, those alone. Like what? What? what you like? There's not a discussion that that this movie is like within light years of those. Yo, the other day Captain America Winter Soldier came on. I watched the whole gym. It's still number one. Yeah, still number one. But yeah, let us know in the conversation below what you guys thought of Thunder Love and Thunder. We'll see you next time on the Nerd J Report.